So in this video is how to paint the kitchen cabinets, and we're gonna make this a really functional, gorgeous, sexy modern bar. Yay! Now, you've gotta make sure that you subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications. The third part of this series is coming out next week, all right? Whenever you're repurposing old wood, remember, it's basically soft wood, so it's got a lot of flexibility. You wanna sand the old and the new. You wanna soften up all the edges, even on the new wood. And this is just to create some consistency here. Generally, it comes milled with a sharper edge, but when you're sanding something down, you can get rid of all the dings and imperfections that have happened over time. Mold your old with your new. Remove adhesives and stuff like that. And don't worry about the nail holes and the gouges. Once we've primed with a flat base primer that we're gonna use in a few minutes, you've now transitioned so that everything in this wood can be used with the new paintable surfaces. Anything that you apply over top of a flat oil primer, as long as the product says paintable on the product label, you can apply it and then sand it and paint directly on top of it. So that includes your dry decks, your caulkings, um, other different kinds of uh, quick epoxy patch fix, um, plastic wood, all these types of products, okay? So don't be worried about it. Whatever's available to you on your shelf will be fine. The trick is to get this set up so now we can spray this. And I'm gonna show you my secret weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but before I spray, I've got a vacuum. Remember, preparation is the key to any successful paint job. Now that I'm done vacuuming, there's one more thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use air to blow it all out. There's always a little bit of dust in there, no matter how well you vacuuming is. There we go. Beautiful. This is also really good for cleaning floors too, right? Once had a job in a cardboard factory and uh, when there's nothing to print, we just clean floors. We'd all hook up to air hoses and just walk around and make nice, lots of dust. Okay, now, time to move on. All right, so here's the next, ba next step, guys. I'm just gonna use a little bucket here, mix a little bit of paint at a time. Here's the product, odorless zinzer. This is a stain blocker, oil-based product that works on everything, anytime. Hardwood, softwood, um, dead animal stains coming through your drywall ceiling. It doesn't matter, this stuff bonds to it. You mix this, it goes in a little bit thick, so you gotta grab a little bit of paint thinner, find a nice solution that works for you, that once you put it into this cute little hand sprayer, right, from Husky, the pressure adjustments down here, this is what they call a high pressure, low volume, okay, HPLV. They use this kind of a system whenever they're spraying your tub or doing new acrylic lacquer. Here's the deal. We're just gonna put some of the product in here. We're gonna adjust our nozzle so that I can spray under control. Work at the back of the cabinet, work my way out. Do the, so the top, bottom, sides of the face, boom, boom, boom. Get one good solid coat of this on and let it dry overnight. It is oil-based, okay? Even though it's being sprayed with an air sprayer, it will dry a little faster, but since it's oil-based, just trust me, Leave it to the next day. You don't want to try to be patching and caulking and working on this just an hour or two after application. All right, remember, once you put on this, you won't get any more bleed through. You won't get any more stain, no more translation, no more not stains, nothing. It's gonna be one solution and that's it. And then only thing after that is to prep it, sign, sand it, and then we can go right into two applications of our finish paint. Yeah. I'm just gonna add the thinner to this right here, right now. Even though this is a gravity feed system and I can turn the pressure down as low as I need to, I still wanna add a little bit of this paint thinner in here. If it's too thick, it's just not gonna react well and it'll go on with big, th thick blobs, okay? That's actually doing really well. I'm actually thinking I'm gonna like that. In a lot of cases, when you're thinning paint, you don't need much, okay? So lucky for me, I had an old can that's still two thirds full, so I didn't have to mix it in small amounts. I'm just gonna put a label on this that it's already pre-thinned. All right, and we're gonna fill this in. There we go. And I'm only gonna go half full so I get ability to get on an angle in here. Okay, we'll start in the back, work our way forward. But before I do that, I'm gonna work on the other side of the cabinet to test the spray because this is a very unseen area. It's gonna be next to the appliances. If I need to, I can adjust my spray or my, my, my strength. I can even stop, pour this out, add more thinner, 
Wait until I'm t perfectly happy. All right, it's a little thin. It probably means it's too thick. I'm just gonna turn down my air pressure and just turn, slow down my process a little bit. It's nice though because it's under a lot of control. I'll just finish this up. So even though I love the tool, let's go through pros and cons for you, okay? This tool works amazing everywhere where there's a corner, okay? Because when you're using a brush or a roller, you're going to get brush marks or you're going to get dripping. This solves that. Check this out. So crazy. You're not going to overspray and cause drips. What I'm going to do is just do all of my edges, my trims inside corners, and then I'm going to come back with the roller and I'm going to do all the main surface. That to me makes sense because I have a small compressor and by the time this recharges to be efficient, I only get a few linear feet at a time. So I'm not gonna go lose my mind over it. I'm just gonna go and do all of the hard to reach places and then roll out the rest of it. <sighs> all right, well, it's next day, obviously the paint's dry. Um, yeah, you know, it's funny. We had a meeting with the team last night and we're looking at all the different possibilities for the channel and what we're doing in the near future. I'm thinking it's time to realize that this renovation project is going to keep me hostage in this church for the next few years just because of the nature of the market how difficult it is to get trades and materials and so we decided we're going to just put it on the market after we got occupancy obviously i'm just using dry decks here to fill the holes we're going to sand them all off when i'm done so this is kind of a weird project for me because I am not a flipper. I don't know how to make money putting lipstick on a pig. Um, <laughs> as you can tell, the countertop behind me is it's painted with a primer because the next video in the series is going to be how I'm tiling the countertop. Uh, I figured as long as I'm selling this place, I might as well make a counter that we haven't put in our video series yet. So that'll be valuable to you. We're going to try to do all of this as low cost as I can, really, because I don't want to put a whole lot of money into this project now that I'm getting rid of it. But at the same time, I want to make videos that are valuable. Because let's face it, like you got to be handy nowadays. I'm getting stories all the time, hearing about we tried to get a contractor. It didn't work out. They didn't show up. They won't start. They took the money and ran. I mean, it's, it's a pretty competitive market out there right now. And if you can't do it yourself, you're going to be waiting a long time before you can get anything done that's affordable or decent quality. Let's face it, if you want it done, you want it done right, you got to do it yourself nowadays. So here we are. Going to go through this process, try to make this as sexy as we can. And even though I'm selling, I'm not going to go cheap. You know, I'm not going to go buy the cabinet paint off of Amazon. I'm still gonna use my C2 paint because, of, you know, my name's still on this work. Whoever moves in here is gonna know who it was that sold it. So I gotta make sure that they're gonna be happy with the product. So here we go. Now I'm all patched up. That's awesome. Ordered some MDF doors for this kitchen. We picked them up. They got here, I don't know, last week or so? Anyway. Once I read the, uh, the size of the cabinets, I ordered these doors right away. And that's awesome. This company's cool. It all comes MDF, recessed panel, shaker style door. Very affordable. If you're looking to repurpose an old kitchen and you just got to get some new doors, I'll, um, I'll put the link in the video description for you. Um, this is obviously going to be a, a Canadian company. Uh, bottom line, guys, a bunch of different places out there you can buy doors from, okay? So... Don't be worried about it. You can do a quick Google search and find out who's near you. Here we go. We're just going to use the roller. Get a primer on here. MDF needs a, a good primer. 
And there are specific um, water-based paint primers for this, all right? But because I've got the oil out, I figure I might as well just finish it off. I don't want to get a brush out, so I'm just gonna lather it into the corners. <laughs> I really should have sprayed this when I had the spray gun out, but it's only a couple of doors, so it's not a big deal. All right, there we go. Now, I'll do the bottom edge. Hopefully by the end of the day, I'll be able to flip these over and do the other side. So my patching is dry now. Yay. I'm gonna give everything a quick light sand. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna shoot it all with this. This is the original bin from Zinzer. The product we used already was the odorless. Okay, so if you're gonna prime with an, odor, an oil, um, prime your spots with an oil or they will flash. And that means that you'll see it through the paint. Um, some products are better than others, but when you're doing cabinetry, you don't have any mercy at all, okay? Yeah. Dry Dex is a spackling, basically. It's like a pre-made quick drying compound in a can. So instead of mixing your own 45 or something, you can use that. It's just convenient. I don't think it does as nice a job as mixing your own 45, but. Okay. Call it. If you get too close with your can, you're gonna get drips. Best to just get a paper towel, clean it all up, and then apply it all over again. You're not going to want to sand that down afterwards. When that dries, it's pretty much bulletproof. C2 cabinet and trim paint. What's the easiest way to say this? I love this company. I think it's the best paint on the market. The difficulty, of course, is that they don't have as many stores as some of the larger chains. So what they do have in the United States right now is they have a delivery service. So you can have it shipped to your home for free. There's conditions on that. I think it's based on the amount of purchase, but it's, it's pretty reasonable. It's like if you get two gallons of paint, it's free delivery. I'm just going to mix this up. I had this delivered here weeks ago. So I've got to give this a good mix. Just giving a bit of shake wasn't going to cut it. So here we go. That mixed up way too easy, actually, man. You know that? That is going to look really good. I've always said on my channel that if I like a product and I believe in the product, and I'm, they want to do a sponsorship, then I'm down, okay? So, case in point, DeWalt, huh? pick up the phone. <laughs> anyway, the point is, great stuff. They have a, um, a, a polyway finish in here, okay? It's not a resin. So, this product is available on the market even during the supply chain shortage, which is kind of nice. I'm loving it, and they got great colors, so feel free to check it out. We'll put the information in the video description if you want to buy this particular color. It's called Potato Leak, and so it's paint, not soup. But you'll figure that out. Here we go. Let's get my spray machine set up, and then off we go to the races. All right, so again, I'm using the Husky sprayer. Um, just to be clear, they come with two of these machines in the case for 150 bucks Canadian. I think that's a great deal. It's a gravity feed, high pressure, low volume. So here's your air pressure knob on the bottom, and here's your volume pressure. When I was spraying this earlier, I didn't have my volume opened up enough, so it was going on a little weak. Once I fixed it, it worked like a charm. So today, we're gonna try with that open a little bit more and get the air mixed right. We're gonna aim to not have to water down the paint. It just creates a whole extra step. I think this tool can compensate. Let me just <clears throat> try this over here first, my, my test spot. Okay, I think I got it balanced out now. Let's try something close up.
All right, I uh, just want to go through the process because, you know, the rest of this is pretty simple. We're going to be using a light sandpaper on this. This door was actually painted three hours ago with a, with a roller. Not bad for an oil product to already be set up and dry and ready for sanding. That's a miracle. All right, um, the process is simple. Paint all your one sides plus a bottom edge. Flip them, paint the other sides, and then come back. We're gonna use the sprayer for the finish on a sanded surface, okay? Just to make sure that we get the look that we're looking for. And again, I'm gonna sand in between coats even after this, just to get rid of any dust and debris, all right? So I'm gonna start off by doing the inside trim here, and then I'll do the face. Remember guys, you don't need to pay exorbitant prices for refinishing work. If you want to do it right, do it yourself. 